Welcome to Olympian Water Testing, giving you the best in water analysis. Today we are looking at mass.gov, copper in drinking water. You probably have some questions and you probably want to know some things. This is a good place to understand that. So the first thing is, how does copper get into my drinking water? Most drinking water sources from reservoirs and groundwater do not contain elevated levels of copper. But when copper is present in the water, it's typically due to the water flowing through pipes or plumbing in homes with copper and brass parts. Service lines, which are the pipes that connect homes to the water main, could have copper in them. And other heavy metals could get into them if the service lines are made of something different. And inside your home, you may have copper lines, pipes, or brass fixtures. Copper levels are highest in the water that has been sitting in the pipe for several hours. The amount of copper in the water decreases after the water is run for one minute. Hot water causes the copper to dissolve and enter the water faster. How does copper get into my body? You may be exposed to small amounts of copper in the air you breathe, the water you drink, the foods you eat. Now, a small amount of copper is not going to hurt you. It actually may be beneficial. But elevated levels, just like iron, can cause problems. You can even get it from touching copper. Particles attached to copper are copper compounds. And copper can get into the body from drinking water or prepared food with water containing copper. Copper is not easily absorbed through the skin because copper is essential to good health in trace amounts. So in small amounts, it's okay. But as it gets elevated, it can be a problem. Everyone absorbs small amounts of copper every day. Our bodies have a natural mechanism to maintain the proper levels of copper. So that is the question, how does copper make you sick? Periodically, drinking water that contains copper above the action level does not guarantee it will not harm someone's health. Consuming high levels of copper may cause nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and stomach cramps. Some infants and children, people with liver disease, and people with Wilson's disease have trouble eliminating copper from their bodies and are more likely to experience the negative effects such as kidney and liver damage. And we've talked about Wilson's disease where the body cannot metabolize copper and people who have that condition are vulnerable to it even in small amounts. Can my child have a copper test done by their pediatrician? Copper is normally found in all tissues of the body. It's measured in the blood, urine, feces, hairs, and nails. Testing blood, urine, hair, and nails can show if a person has been exposed to higher than normal levels of copper. It cannot be used to predict the amount of exposure, how long the exposure occurred, or potential health effects. Specific health questions about exposure to copper should be directed to your doctor or another health care provider. What can you do to protect your family? Run your water before using that, so you want to make sure you use cold water when you run it. Always use cold water for drinking and cooking. Do not use hot water for drinking or cooking. If you want hot water, run cold water from the faucet and then warm it in the microwave or on the stove. And when mixing powdered baby formula with tap water, always use cold water. Run the water for one minute before using it. This can reduce the copper levels by flushing out the water that's been sitting there. And then the next best thing is to test your drinking water. You could do this with a kit, but to truly know if you have a high level of copper, it's always a good idea to periodically test your water professionally for high levels and elevated levels of copper in your drinking water.